Hey YouTubers, welcome back to John's Garage. Today we're going to find out, does this 2000 Corvette have a parasitic drain on the battery or not? I'm going to show you how to do this with just a simple multimeter and uh, some patience. It doesn't take long. The longest part is just waiting for the car to go to sleep. This car, all the modules will go to sleep in 15 minutes. Some of the newer cars may take 45 minutes for all modules to go to sleep. So check your car and see what the requirement is. But uh, some of the very newest cars may take up to an hour before you can proceed with uh, checking for parasitic drain. So if I had extra money laying around, I would get this clamp-on amp meter that is designed for low amp readings, like a parasitic draw test. It's made by Electronic Specialties, and it's number 688. But this thing, you know, tax and shipping, it's close to $200. So there's one other tool I would get if I had money left. I would also get this Amp Hound 2 that's for testing each fuse. And it makes a little beep when you're connected solidly to the fuse. It's got these nice little connectors that clip onto the fuse and the probes align so they touch. And it tells you how many amps of draw it has on each fuse. So that's a really nice tool, but it's $85 plus tax and shipping. So that's about another hundred bucks plus the other meter, 200 bucks, they're up to $300. So I'm gonna show you how to do this test with just a inexpensive amp meter, you know, multimeter amp meter that is uh, 10 amp capable. So here's the tools that we need. We've got our keys, just two hose clamps, or you can use any kind of a plastic clamp, anything. I've got this old uh, battery threaded stud that I can use for the negative. A little screwdriver to set my door latches and to tighten these. Uh, for the battery negative removal, I've got eight millimeter. Um, you can use American, a lot of my tools are metric, so you can use the American size that you need. And then I've got my fluke meter, and you want to check to make sure your meter is good before you use it. Make sure you don't have bad leads or anything. So I'm going to turn it on here. Got this stand here. So, so we got tone. We go over here and we make sure we got 0.1. That's good. Leads are good. So our meter's good to go. So a word of caution when using your meter in amps right here. This is 10 amps. It is fused. So when you've got it connected in line with the negative terminal of your battery, don't start the car, turn on the headlights, or anything that's going to draw more than 10 amps, or you will blow the internal fuse on this. And if you've got a really cheap multimeter that has no internal fuse, you're going to fry it. So just remember, we've got the car in sleep mode, and it shouldn't be pulling anything more than 0.05 amps. Unless you got a parasitic drain, maybe it's going to pull one or two amps for something that's draining the battery. One, two, three, four amps. Uh, even something like an interior light is going to have a pretty good draw. Interior light shouldn't go over 10 amps, but if you turned on, say, the high beams of your car, it might go pretty close or maybe over 10 amps. Um, one headlight on low beam, I think, is 4 amps. So. Be careful what you turn on when this is in line. You, you don't really want to turn anything on. You just want to probe your fuses and see where your parasitic drain is if you're over 0.05. And like I say, this Corvette should be 0.025 at the most while it's in sleep mode. The first thing you want to do is make sure your battery has a good charge. Let's go to volts DC. and probe across positive and negative. And we got 12.41 volts DC. So that's good enough for this test. 12.6 uh, be fully charged. So this is anything above 12.0 is good enough for uh, doing a parasitic draw test. 
So if your Corvette has the under hood light option, this is activated when the hood goes up and knows the position of the hood up or down. So on this car, I simply unplug it. So if we follow down next to the passenger headlight, there is a plug that goes up to the hood and I just unplugged it. This car has the hood open often and I don't want to drain the battery with that. So just leave it unplugged. And then uh, make sure you've cleared the inside of the car. Uh, unplug anything in the cigarette lighter or if you've got USB ports, unplug every gadget that you may have plugged in. So you need to prepare the car by opening both doors and then we need to uh, close the latches. So take any screwdriver you got and push it in there. Two clicks and it's latched. Do that on both doors and then the car will think the doors are shut. And when you're done with this uh, test, you want to make sure you unlatch it before you slam the door. So pull up on the handle and it will... I'm going to leave my screwdriver in to show you through this process how it unlocks. So one, two, it is locked. See that there? It's locked. When I pull up the handle, it unlocked. It just pushed it right out. Okay, so now you're safe to slam the door and you won't break the latch. So if you have the kind of car that has a uh, hood latch open sensor, uh, you either need to latch that with a screwdriver the way we did the doors or unplug that sensor and take a paper clip bent in a U shape and plug it into those two connectors to make it simulate like it is latched. And then go ahead and, and lock the car with the remote but leave the doors open and uh, that'll set the alarm too. That'll begin the timer for all the modules to go to sleep. This Corvette takes 15 minutes for everything to go to sleep, so we'll give it 15 minutes after we uh, lock with the remote. So after 15 minutes, everything in the car has gone to sleep. We'll go ahead and unscrew the negative uh, terminal of the battery and put our uh, amp meter in line with the 10 amp setting on our probes. So we have this amp meter. It's just a old Fluke 77. Uh, if you have a meter that has a 10 amp, and this is fused to the common here, so it does have a fuse, uh, 10 amp, we set it to DC amps. That's the solid straight line with a dash line underneath it. That's AC. You want this one for DC. Um, and th then you want to put your leads in line. So I disconnected the negative. You always want to do it from the negative side. Unless you have a clamp on, you can do it from the positive. So we're working from the negative side to be safer. And I just happen to have this... Uh, you can use a bolt of the correct thread size if you have a, a bolt of that size. This is a... Uh, uh, a battery terminal um, add-on that I had just laying in my toolbox and then I put a just a hose clamp to hold the probe there and uh, took the negative cable and put another hose clamp on that bolt there and put the other lead and you can see with the car sleeping uh, we're bouncing between 0.02 amps 0.01 amps. So unfortunately this meter doesn't have a third decimal like more expensive uh, meters for measuring um, low amperage parasitic drain would have a third uh, decimal place but this is, is good enough as I say good enough for government work. Uh, you want to be less than 50 thousandths of an amp. You want to be less than point 0 0.05 and we're bouncing between 0 0.01 0 0.02 so uh, we're good these cars when they're sleeping if I had that third decimal place I would say it's going to be about 0 0.025 at the most and uh, this is this is good so there's no unacceptable parasitic drain car manufacturers will usually say 51 thousandths 
is acceptable, 50 thousandths of an amp, um, because that will get you about 30 days of parasitic drain and the car should still start. Um, this battery is an Optima Red Top and it says here that it has a reserve capacity let's see the sticker here, Re reserve capacity of 100. So you want to take reserve capacity divide by 4 and that will give you 25 on this battery. If it was a 90 reserve capacity, um, that's amp hours, uh, that would give you 22.5. So this one would be 25. So uh, we're good being down in this range here, uh, bouncing between 20 something down to 10 something when the car is sleeping. So there's no unacceptable parasitic drain here. So if you do have a parasitic drain, next thing you want to do is put your meter on this setting, 300 millivolts, and then you want to have your probes here on volts and common, and then you want to go to your mini fuses. There's a couple of fuse boxes that are different on every car, so this one's got one in the engine bay, and then another one underneath the passenger foot well. And so then you just take your probes and probe across each fuse. So you go to each fuse and you put your leads in there and you'll get a reading. You get a quick reading and then it goes to zero. Get a quick reading and it goes to zero. So that's how you know you're on each one. So you check every fuse until you find which one is draining. So when you're probing all your fuses, if you come across one that has a higher than expected reading, I'll put a link in the description below that shows you how to convert that based on the fuse. Like this is a 10 amp and it's a red fuse, so you look on that chart, you go to the 10 amp uh, red and go down to where your reading is and then go across and see how many amps it is pulling. Because we're measuring in millivolts, so we've got to convert that to amps. And if it is significant enough to match what you found on your, uh, your amp meter while it was connected to your battery, they might match exactly. Like, let's say if you had uh, 0.08 amps and you found one here that was that was pretty close to that that could be your your uh, culprit so you want to pull that fuse and then check your meter and see if it went away and you do that through all the fuses you can find in the car whether they're here or under the passenger foot well depending on what kind of car you have they could be located uh, could be next to the steering wheel with the driver door open. A lot of cars have them there. I've seen Hondas with that, the older Hondas, um, Acuras. They so the good news is, no, this car does not have a parasitic drain on the battery.